What's up, beautiful people? Mache back with you, the Sensual Shaman, here to give you guys another weekly energy report. Last week, we were talking about shaking things up, shaking the way that we engage with our lives, our creations, and our relationships, because Spirit told us to try the opposite. They said, what you doing? Let's try it differently, because there are so many possibilities. There's so many ways that this can be manifested, right? This love that you want, this thing that you want, this production that you want. And that energy is is, is still flowing because the, the overall energy for this week is live a fantasy. Okay. So play dress up, play with your appearance, uh, play as a child. Um, and I do see here though, that there is some anxiety around that. So let's dig into that. Because uh, when I asked Spirit, like, well, why live a fantasy? Like, what's what's this all about? We've got the tower card, okay? So things disappearing from our lives, uh, things being wiped out. And I as a, that was already a, um, coming up in the beginning of April, right? March into April, or just for many of us, this is a theme, right? The tower card comes often into our lives, disappearing people, beliefs, and positions from our lives, places from our lives. And this is no different. And for me, this transformation feels difficult um, because this tower card, I'm really paying attention to the butterflies here and how they are sort of uh, uh, like the uh, like the Avengers, right? When everybody disappears, right? Like that's sort of the energy this is giving me. They're just like slowly going into non-existence, right? So it's like you go through this transformation and now it's like, well, who am I without this other thing? And it's time for you to figure that out. It's time for you to figure out that you can do it a different way, that you could do it on your own, or you don't need that type of energy around you at the very least. Not that you can do it alone, because we can't. Um, this, this journey is not meant to be traversed alone at all by any means. Um, so yeah, th this transformation feels heavy. It feels difficult because the energy surrounding that tower moment is anxiety. Right, so we're wondering, can I do this by myself? Am I meant for this? Are they are they too good for me? Am I ready for this? Am I ready for this sort of sort of visibility? Am I ready to be big? Am I ready to be bold? Am I ready to look different, be different? Is my life like you know? Am I financially ready? Am I mentally ready? Is my heart ready? Um, so I feel you guys asking yourselves all these questions and breathe. Okay, because I know that you are set on the story ending that way, but the truth of the matter is there are adjacent possibilities. Again, infinite possibilities came up last week. Adjacent possibilities is coming up this week. Spirit is letting you know not to get stuck on one storyline because there are so many characters in our lives, so many uh, settings in our lives, so many uh, so much magic in our lives that you have no idea what doors are going to open for you and where they might come, right? There's a, a door on the ground, right? There might be a possibility in your home, right? A home business, right? There might be a possibility um, that comes when you just speak to your neighbor. So don't be, don't be afraid of this tower moment because the doors of possibility are opening, okay? They were already open. And perhaps there is a need for Spirit to say, you know what, I'm gonna take that that option away because she's not, they're not looking around. They don't see how big this world is. They don't see how big they are. They don't say how, they don't see how powerful they are. They don't see how uh, supplied, they don't see their supply. They don't see their tools. They don't see the gift in their home, right? They don't see the people around them. So let me take this away so you can see what's really out here. Right, that's what I'm feeling, and we've also got the second chakra here, which is our um, sacral chakra, which is our seat of our personality and the seat of our desires and creative energy. And uh, yeah, I'm feeling that's gonna, that is going to be ignited. Okay, so don't be afraid or anxious about this thing that's that's has left. Um, so yeah, live a fantasy. Also said, um, I really oh yeah, I wanted to read this to you guys. Um, Fantasy adds a certain levity to a situation that requires grand measures, right? So play a little, right? Play a little is the invitation. Play in your relationships. Don't take them so seriously. Stop interrogating people. Stop trying to make them the, the one and just, uh, you know, live playfully. 
but also, you know, yield to reality when necessary, which is exactly what this card says, right? Yield to reality when necessary. Um, all right. The magician understands the value of creating an environment to facilitate an experience. I'm going to read that again because that is so delicious. The magician, you, right? You with all of these tools, you who understands the power of prayer, you who understands the power of uh, the energy of an orgasm, you who understands the, the power of your intention and your joyful life force, right? That if I want it and if I'm, you know, you, you who has all of this, all of this supply, understands the value of creating an environment, manage your setting so that you can facilitate an experience, right? So this is what I talk about when I talk about romance. This is what I talk about, uh, you know, curating an experience, right? So magicians and brujas and witches and shamans, they don't just you know, say a couple words and da da da. No, we we set the mood. We make sure that the smells are there. We make sure that we have something beautiful to look at. Right, we're making it a sensory experience. Right, that is why I did not just name myself the sensual shaman because I found healing through masturbation. I named myself the sensual shaman as an invitation to remember to make every as much as I can everything a sensual experience. Right? to delight my ears and my eyes and my hands and my feet and my heart, uh, playing with temperature, right? Making sure that when people come into your home, there is a feeling that they get, all right? So you, we must understand the value of creating an environment to facilitate an experience. Right? So that is why women play with their appearance because I'm creating an environment so that I and other people who engage with me have a different experience of me, right? Of us, right? So, right, Mache with the fro is a different uh, vibe. It's a different experience, right? I'm experiencing me different, right? I'm like, ooh, okay, like, what does this feel like? Um, you know, blue flowers versus red flowers, you know, sunflowers versus lace, um, you know, fire versus water, like changing the environment to create a different experience. So play with that this week. I love that so much. And then something else that I want to touch on because some other energy came out. Um, we've got the think, we've got the door to romance coming up, but on either side, we've got the thinking woman and then the sun on either side of that door to romance, which feels like to me, your mind won't get you to that door of romance, won't get you to that love that you want to experience, right? So thinking about how we can facilitate our environment, right? Our inner environment, right? What are we putting in our inner environment to welcome love in, to invite love in? Are we filled with mistrust and betrayals? Um, are we already acting as if We've already been deceived, right? You're creating an environment in this partnership that does not yet exist, and now it's going to be made manifest be because you know you are already speaking as if you mistrust people. And um, that was something that I heard this week. You you were yeah you know you're lying to people, thinking that well they're not going to hear the truth, so I'm just going to lie. And it's like, well, why don't we operate off of the truth, that would be great. Why don't we operate off of trust? That would be great, right? So operating from truth and trust, operate, right? Because that's what that's what a shaman does. That's what a bruja does, a brujo. That's what uh, witches do. That's what we do when we do spell work. We operate from a space of trust and that this, this, this is, I trust this moment. I trust myself. I trust this magic. I trust the ceremony. I trust that this ritual will bring about um, what I desire, right? So you don't go into spell work thinking this ain't gonna work. So why would you go into love and into partnership and into business with that sort of attitude? That's not the environment that blooms great love, right? And of course, we're in all imperfect. Of course, we have days where we have that or we have conversations, but the point is to um, 
mend that. The point is to go go back to that and and balm that situation with some sweetness, with some love, and say what it is that you really want, which is connection, which is closeness, which is intimacy. Right? I know that I was using words that separated us. I know I was using words and saying things as if I already, as if you've given me a reason to mistrust you. I want to rectify that. I want to heal that with you right now. Right. So there's a way that we can we can heal those moments because we're all imperfect and we all be, you know. So uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, again, I'm going to invite you guys to get outside as always. Um and then we've also got the card for given here, which is making me think about this love thing, right? Um, to have a proper inner environment so that love will bloom, we have to realize that all is forgiven, right? Sometimes we think that God, right? If you, if you have that understanding, hasn't forgiven us too. So I think that sometimes that's why we haven't forgiven ourselves. Like, well, they just think I'm so dumb or, or, you know, they, yeah, whoever they is, it is, you know, we're holding ourselves to that so, so tightly to the opinions of others and whether other people are still thinking about us in a certain way. Well, they saw me fail before and they saw me not finish this, this time. And they saw that relationship fail. Please. Please, none of that is creating an environment for a divine love experience. Um, and so we have to really, again, what is my inner environment meant creating, right? Um, the magician understands the value of creating an environment to facilitate an experience. So you, the magician, you who has all of the tools and the love and the supernatural support. What kind of inner environment can I create so that love, so that my creations, and so that all of my relationships and all that I want to do and be in this world can be made manifest? What do I have to do to my inner environment? so that it's clean and good and high vibes. I need to listen to, to this song every morning, right? Or um, I need to act from a place of trust when I engage with this person and that person. I need to remember that I am here to create and in the creation are some mistakes and that is just part of it, right? These are the things we have to do to our inner environment and I love this invitation oh so much, yeah. All is forgiven, okay? I want. I have to say that all is forgiven. You're good. You can operate now. You can go. You can fly. <laughs> all right, peace, you guys. I will see you on the next one. <laughs>